you may have heard that the Great Barrier Reef is in peril. But then again, you may not have heard that. Uh, apparently, I brought us some articles to show you. Um, Australia just lowered the uh, the condition to very poor. It's not considered endangered yet, although it suffered some massive uh, devastation, what's called coral bleaching. And what happens to coral, one of the worst things really that can happen to coral is that the uh, that the coral that the polyps lose the algae that live inside of them. So, and then they become like ghostly white, and they're, they call it bleaching. Um, it happens. I guess for an array of reasons, but one of which is a raising in temperature. Two degrees Fahrenheit, more than average, can cause bleaching. Basically, the the algae is like, fuck this, I'm out. And then it like, you know, off, up, up and away. And uh, and then the problem with bleached coral is that over time, it, it dies. Uh, it, it, I guess it needs the um, the algae to survive. I'm not a much of a marine biologist, but that's fucked. Um a couple upsides to this. One is that I've heard that scientists figured out a way to um, regrow coral. And what they do is they shatter it and then plant it in the ocean all in little bits. And then all of the little shattered pieces start to grow like in, in synergy. So we're actually finding that they can regrow five, 25 times faster than uh, in normal. And I mean, this is an older article I've seen more recent articles too that they're even figuring out like 40 times i don't know exactly but it looks like it looks like we can regrow it then the idea is how do you get how do you like reintroduce the uh the green stuff the algae well you either got to lower the the temperature of the water um which like i said i'm not a marine biologist but you could uh i think you can spray salt water into the atmosphere to combine with the carbon dioxide and create ozone and give off methane to cool down the atmosphere. I'm not hundred percent sure if any of you are, if you're a uh, scientist and you'd like to explore that concept further, please let me know. Cause I think that could be something we could do on a global scale and really help cool down the earth right now a little bit. You know, there's a hurricane coming in. Well, there's a, there's a bunch of winds that are building into a hurricane in the, in the uh, Caribbean right now. What's the name of this, this hurricane? Uh, hurricane. Oh, I just started using Duck Duck Go. I just got off of Chrome and went to Duck Duck Go, and I'm 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 pretty happy so far. Hurricane Dorian, Dorian, poses a significant threat. Let's see if we can bend the weather and make it slow down. So you know, like clouds are electromagnetic, very lightweight plasma, and your body's got an electromagnetic field. And I found moving with the wind, you can alter cloud patterns you can disperse them or coagulate them with negative energy and positive energy you know it's just kind of a magical thing i practice um, people in the past also have been known to control the weather sometimes i and you've probably experienced it at some point in your life if you've taken psychedelic drugs well i don't know about probably is not the right word but there if you have taken psychedelic drugs and got down with the weather you may have noticed that the wind will change direction around you sometimes and when you're really paying attention to it and you know because stuff's happening whether you're paying attention to it or not and if you're if you're actually open to acknowledging when it changes you'll notice that it sometimes has to do with the way you're feeling or behaving so that's one way we could disperse a hurricane let's meditate on it send the winds in the opposite direction have it disperse a little bit uh i don't know if you saw but this giant a uh, floating raft of volcanic rock is now off the coast of of uh, Australia, where the Great Barrier Reef is located. B Great Barrier Reef's in northeast Australia. And uh, uh, like a volcano erupted a couple weeks ago, and it's what they call pumice. It's this. It's uh, debris slick. I don't know what they're calling it, pumice raft. But it's this bunch of, bunch of rock that's just now floating in the Pacific that's like a big about the size of Manhattan, they're saying. And uh, they've suggested that it may actually help reintroduce coral and other animals, corals and animal, by the way, technically, um, into the barrier. Uh, I think by in one year's time, they assume that this, this pumice raft will reach Australia. And at that point, it may end up depositing and reintroducing an ecosystem of animals and plankton and things like that. I think technically plankton is also an animal. Um, 
back into the reef to help repopulate the, the thing. Cause it's not just the coral, it's the animals that live inside the coral, the plants that live inside the coral that are what make it so lush and vibrant and healthy of an ecosystem, such as the case in many ecosystems like the Amazon, which you may have heard has been burning over the last month. And now I've heard reports that, you know, it's not that out of, out of the question for the Amazon to burn, you know, controlled burns are a way to lay down land for like farmers, you know, they'll grow crops and then they'll burn so that there's enough mulch for them the next season if they're monocropping. But at the same time, the fires seem to have spread a little out of control in South America. And once you take down what's called old growth forest, uh, it, replanting the trees like with a seed bomber or something. I don't know if you heard of seed bombing before. This is pretty interesting stuff. Seed bombing is a tactic where you can retrofit bomber planes and uh, seed bombing bomber plane and actually drop seeds. And they've really figured out, you know, really like they've uh, in the last couple of years, they figured out great ways to literally a billion trees a year. So we can replant the trees, but the old growth, if you take it out, it's the ecosystem that lives within it that you wipe out with like a burn or a devastation of some sort that the replant is not going to bring back the animals. Once the animals are out of there, they're out of there. If they may over time, but removing old growth is removing old growth. And I think you got to be really, really careful about removing old growth and letting old growth die and coral reefs die. So we are in a position right now where we probably want to cool the earth down a little bit, homes, you and me together at last. Coral bleaching is kind of funny. I mean, it's a horrible thing, but the fact that it poops out the algae expels, it doesn't actually poop it out. All right, that's all.